Okay, so in this video, uh, I'm going to show you what goes into determining the order of a chemical reaction. So how do we determine the order of a chemical reaction? Well, the first fact that we need to know about this is that the order of a reaction can be determined only by experiment. So in other words, the only way to figure out the order of the reaction is to run the experiment, measure the rate, and see what you get. So the method that we normally use to figure out the order of the reaction is called the method of initial rates. And in the method of initial rates, the initial rate, or the rate for a short time interval at the beginning of the reaction, is measured at several concentrations of the reactants. So let's look at the following reaction here. Here we have a reaction in which A, our single reactant, becomes products. And here we have a table of the concentration of A, which is in molar, or moles per liter. And we also have the initial rate in molar per second, or moles over liters times seconds. So it says that in this experiment, the initial concentration was 0 0.1 molar, and the initial rate was 30 molar per second. In the second row, the initial concentration is 0 0.2 molar and the initial rate is 60 molar per second and so on. So we wanted to determine the rate law and the rate constant for this reaction. So what is the expression for the rate law? The expression for the rate law is rate equals K times the concentration of A to the n power, where n is the order. So really, it goes back to order. We're trying to find the order of this reaction so that we can find the rate law of the reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how the concentration changes and we're also going to see how the initial rate changes and see if we can make any conclusions out of it. So in the first two experiments we have 0.1 molar and 0.2 molar so if I were to divide 0.2 by 0.1 we'd say that this sort of is multiplied by 2. 0.1 times 2 is 0.2 and if we look at the change in the initial rate it looks like the initial rate is doubling as well. 30 times 2 equals 60. Let's look at the second and third experiments. We have 0.2 doubling to 0.4 so that again is times 2 and then we have 60 which is also doubling to 120. 60 times 2 is 120. So really what's going on is the concentration, the rate actually, is directly proportional to the concentration. As the rate doubles, excuse me, as the concentration doubles, the rate also doubles. Therefore, the rate is equal to k times the concentration of A to the first power, or simply k times the concentration of A. So this is actually a first order reaction. So we just determined the rate law. Now let's try to determine the rate constant. Now this equation says rate equals k times the concentration of A. So let's see if we can't solve for k. It looks like algebraically if I divide both sides by a concentration of A, I'll get k all by itself, which is what I want. So I'm going to do just that. And I'll get k equals rate over the concentration of A. So to determine the rate constant, really all I have to do is I can pick any one of these experiments, plug in the respective values of concentration of A and initial rate, and then use this equation and we'll, ha we'll get our rate constant. So for simplicity, I'm just going to choose the first row. So we have a concentration of A of 0.1 molar, an initial rate of 30 molar per second. So K is rate over concentration of A, so I'm going to fill that out real quick. Our rate is 30 molar per second. 
and our concentration of A is 0.1 molar. Our units cancel in this way. It looks like molars, molar cancels out with molar. And we're left with 30 divided by 0.1 or 300 reciprocal seconds, seconds to the minus 1. You have molar per second over molar, and you end up with nothing but per second or reciprocal seconds. So that is the rate law and the rate constant for this reaction. So before I end this video, let's, let's look at a couple of other possibilities as to what these numbers could be doing and how we would determine the rate law if the numbers were different. So suppose instead of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.4 molar, Suppose we had the following concentrations. How about 2, 4, and 12 molar? And instead of the 30, 60, and 120 molar per second initial rates, let's choose 10, 40, and 360 molar per second. So let's do the same thing. Let's figure out what factor we have to multiply to get through each one of these steps. So right here, it looks like in the first and second experiments, the concentration goes from 2 to 4, so that's a doubling. It is multiplied by 2. And from 4 to 12, well, what's 12 divided by 4? That's actually 3. So in this one, it, from 4 to 12, it gets multiplied by 3. When we go from 10 to 40 molar per second, we're actually multiplying that by 4. And when we go to 40, from 40 to, 30, to 360 molar per second, this is actually being multiplied by 9. 360 divided by 40 is 9. So instead of the rate of the reaction being directly proportional to the concentration itself, uh, that's not happening anymore when we double the concentration the rate increases by by a factor of four and when we triple the concentration the rate increases by a factor of nine so so really what's going on is that the rate is proportional to the square of the concentration so this is actually a second order reaction and we would describe the rate law saying that the rate is equal to k times the concentration of A squared. So that's sort of a way to use the method of initial rates to determine you know, if a reaction is second order if you see this sort of pattern. Okay. So let's turn our attention to one final scenario. Suppose we have an, a concentration of 20, um, 40, and 1,000 molar. And suppose we have an initial rate of 0 0.04 molar per second, 0 0.04 molar per second, and 0 0.04 molar per second. Notice that no matter what we do to the concentration of A, the initial rate is the same for all three of these. So that means that the rate is actually independent of concentration. So can you think of a reaction order in which the rate is independent of the concentration? Sounds to me like a zero order reaction. So we would say that the rate is equal to K times the concentration of A to the zero power. And as we know from math class, anything to the zero power is one. So the rate is equal to So this is just an introduction to, you know, the method of initial rates and how it is applied at least to a one reactant problem.